Hello, I'm Dr. Amy Brambos, a data dissemination specialist with the U.S. Census Bureau. The Small Area Income and Poverty Estimates Program, or SAPI for short, provides statistics which are important for many data users and grant writers, but is of particular interest for education grant writers. The U.S. Department of Education utilizes SAPI estimates to determine the allocation of Title I funding to school districts based on their number and percentage of low-income students. Use of the SAPI interactive data tool allows school districts to save a great deal of time to verify their annual poverty estimate for Title I. In this data gem, let's take a look at how to use this tool. Navigate to the SAPI tool using the links provided in and below this video. As you can see along the left-hand side of the screen, the SAPI interactive data tool supports data lookup, downloading, mapping, and trend visualization at the state, county, and school district geographies. As you make your geographic selection, some data are unavailable and will be grayed out. Let's see some examples. We discussed the importance of this school for school district funding, so we'll start there. Under the Filter By menu, you can simply select the School Districts button. In the pop-up window, start typing Buffalo City School District in the empty search bar on the top left. The school districts will populate. Make sure you are selecting the district in the correct state before selecting the box. We want to select the district in New York. Once your district appears, select it, then then click OK. The map should zoom in on the generalized boundaries of the school district. If it does not, which sometimes happens in states where school districts do not line up with county boundaries, like New York, you will need to use the Zoom tool to get closer. It may be important to note here that boundaries in our SAPI interactive tool are generalized for faster loading times. However, the table contains a link unique to each district that will display detailed boundaries. In this tool, the poverty data for the school district of choice will appear when you hover over it on the map. You can alter the transparency of the map in the map key, change to a street or topographical map view if you prefer, download the map, enlarge the map, and select alternate years. The filter option will also alter the data on display in the table and graph. You will notice the download and enlarge icons are found above the graph and table displays as well. The graph displays data for most areas since 1997 to the most current data set, in this example, 2023. As you hover over the graph, the data in corresponding year are displayed for you. There is a gap between 2004 and 2005. This is when SAPI began using data from the American Community Survey rather than from the American Social and Economic Supplement to the current population survey. Within the table part of the display, data for the school district is displayed from the most recent release. You will find population data, household data, poverty data, and a link to another map. If you'd like to add additional school districts for comparison, you can double click on surrounding districts in the map. They will be highlighted in the map and populate in the graph and table displays. The map hyperlink in the table will open in a new tab or window. This navigates to the U.S. Census Bureau's data.census.gov website. This map reflects current boundaries, not generalized as shown in SAPI, and will link you to additional data on your school district. There are a few items that are very important to note about these data before we change geographies. One is that the poverty status is defined by family. Either everyone in the family is in poverty or no one in the family is in poverty. SAPI program estimates are based on the official measure of poverty as defined by the federal government. You can learn more about how poverty thresholds are assigned and what sources of income are used to determine poverty status by visiting the census.gov website and searching poverty threshold. Second, free and reduced price lunch or FRPL numbers use different income thresholds than SAPI estimates. They are not comparable. FRPL has different income levels for eligibility and eligibility is based on the income guidelines published by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Third, the SAPI estimate is not an enrollment number. 
It is an estimate of school age population for children living within school district boundaries. This estimate excludes children who live outside the district but attend schools within district boundaries since all children are counted in the district in which they reside. Okay, now let's filter by county to see what other types of data we can collect using this tool. To start over or change your filters, use the clear selections button located on the left. This time, we're going to choose county. Just like school district, we will start typing the county in the empty search box on the top left. I am going to search for Hot Springs, Wyoming. Make sure it is the county in Wyoming and click OK. The map zooms into Hot Springs, Wyoming. The graph and table populate with not only Hot Springs data, but the state of Wyoming and national data for comparison as well. If we look to the left, we see age-related filters and household incomes are available to us. Our current data represent all ages. Let's select these filters to see what changes. We'll start with age under 18 and ages 5 to 17 in families. Each of these data sets provides us with an estimate number, percent, and 90% confidence data range. Using the graph, we can track these data over time. Median household income provides us with a national, state, and county comparison of median household income. And again, we can track these vintage data over time using the graph option. You can download and share these data by copying the URL or using the download button. Several data sources are used in producing the safety program estimates. They are compiled from aggregated federal income tax returns, SNAP benefits, poverty universe data, supplemental security income recipiency, and economic data from the Bureau of Economic Analysis. These estimates are then combined with direct estimates from the American Community Survey. We hope you loved this user-friendly tool. For more videos like this, go to census.gov forward slash academy and subscribe.